<sighs> yeah. This is a late 2013 27 inch 3.5 gigahertz quad core i7 iMac. It has 12 gigs of RAM in it because I didn't max it out and I bought it in 2014. In fact, this is the one that's just before the 5K screen. I've had it just shy on eight years. It owes me absolutely nothing. It's been responsible for three, four albums from different artists, including myself, an EP by myself, lots of singles for myself and other artists as well. And it's been an absolute powerhouse for music production. But in 2020, Apple announced the M1 chip and they put it in this. This is the iPad fifth generation. Now I use that for all my video editing for this channel. I don't use that for video editing, put 4K into that and it starts struggling like crazy. All my videos from the past three years have been edited on iPad and if you're interested in how I do that then let me know in the comments below and I'll make a video about it. When it comes down to music production and working with clients it's been that bad boy that has done it all. My last laptop was from 2009 and I think it still works. The reason I think it still works is because it's with my dad and if I remember correctly he can only use it when it's plugged in because the battery's now gone and it chugs along as a basic web browser but the power in that iPad with the M1 chip is way more powerful than the MacBook Pro from 2009 and is even more powerful than that. But up until now, I've never really wanted a laptop. It was quite nice to have a desktop and a dedicated place to do my music work. But I do need to be more portable. So when Apple announced the brand new MacBook Pro is the 14 inch and the 16 inch, I knew it was time for a change. Now the good news is that's gonna stay in the family. In the family! And my dad's getting an upgrade because he's getting that iMac. Now the music industry is always the last one to drag its heels when it comes to compatibility. But if you're someone who uses GarageBand or Logic, then when Apple bring out a new system, it's pretty much up to date straight away. It's normally the third party plugins you have to wait for. Now on this Mac right now is Mac OS Catalina and that's the highest it'll go. I can't go any higher than that with it. It won't allow me to go onto Big Sur, let alone Monterey. And I do client work, which actually then holds a problem. If someone walks in with a Logic Pro project that's 10.7, I'm actually stuck on 10.6.3. Now there's nothing wrong with this Mac. That's why it's going to my dad. And I can even expand the RAM on it even more. It's only got 12 gig in it. I think I can put up to 30 32 in that thing. It's actually the three terabyte one with the fusion drive in. So for day-to-day -day tasks, it's pretty nippy. But I want to become completely portable when it comes to video editing and music production as well. So which Mac did I go for? I was actually going to go for the base model 14 inch MacBook Pro. I know the M1 chip is screaming fast, so therefore the M1 Pro would be even faster. But it was the storage that kind of got me, so I went up one stage to the next model, which is this one. This is the 14 inch 10 core with 16 GPU core and one terabyte storage and 16 gigs of RAM. The nice little surprise with this one that I forgot about actually is it comes with the faster charger, the 96 watt one. So let's crack it open, but more importantly, let's get logic up to it and see what we can do with it. Now, while we're waiting for all the updates, let's have a quick word about our sponsor today, which is DistroKid. DistroKid are a music distribution company. What that means is if you make music on things like Macs or iPads or whatever device you use, and you want to get it out there to things like Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon Music and Deezer and Pandora and all the other places, then you need a music distributor. So what you do is you give your music to them and they push it out to all the online stores and music sites around the world, including social media sites. And that's a really big one at the moment. Things like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and YouTube, you can have your music pushed over to those platforms and then when you actually make a story, you could create a story about a release that you're doing and use the music for that, which is your music. You can also let other people use that music as well and when they do, you get paid. Now other music distributors actually charge you per release and that can actually get quite pricey if you're bringing out quite a lot of content. But DistroKid have a different way of doing it, they do it subscription based, which is one price per year, which is $19.99. That's to bring out as much music as you want, EPs, singles, albums, 
live stream recordings, whatever you want to do. They can even get you sorted with covers as well. But with the link that's on the screen now, it's also in the description box below, we can save you 7% of your first annual membership, no matter which tier you use. And DistroKid have three tiers, $19.99 is the first tier. The second tier is called Musicians Plus, where you've got two bands or two musicians, or you run as a solo artist, but also you run in a band as well. And you also want to dictate the date of release, you can do that with Musicians Plus, and that is $35.99 a year. The final tier is the label tier, which is $79.99, so $80 basically, and you can actually put up as much music as you want from as many artists as you want. So five Five plus artists. District Kid have a couple of cool things, things like teams, so if you've got five members in your band, you want to split the money five ways, they can sort that out for you. They also have a thing called a hyper follow page, so as soon as you make a release, then they generate what's called a hyper follow page, which is completely free to you and for you to use to send out to everyone. Imagine you're on Apple Music, but your friends all listen to stuff on Spotify. You don't want to be sending them the wrong link. You just send them that link for the release, and then they can choose what music platform they listen to you on. The hyperfollow system is completely free, and it works with every single release that you do. Speaking of add-ons, you can do add-ons with DistroKid as well, including lossless audio and even leave a legacy for when you're no longer here. And DistroKid will continue to look after that for you and pay the royalties to someone of your choosing. There's absolutely loads more that you can do with DistroKid, so click the link, have a look and start distributing your music today. And thank you, DistroKid, for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the Mac. So I've not put any of my own stuff onto Logic, but what I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the demo projects. Now the demo projects, there used to be just Billie Eilish and another one, and now we've got Little Nas X, and this is the Montreal track. We've also got the Spatial Audio track, because this is 10.7, and we've also got a Spatial Audio demo grid as well. But I'm gonna use the Billie Eilish one, so this is Ocean Eyes. I'm gonna boot Ocean Eyes up, and then just, first of all, I wanna hear what it sounds like through these speakers, but then also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna times the tracks by four. What that means is I'm going to take track one all the way through, I'm going to literally times them four times. The reason I'm doing this is because I just want to see how this handles it. There's lots of tracks on there, I think there's 43-ish tracks on there. So let's boot up Billie Eilish Ocean Eyes and let's just have a look and see how, how, how long it takes. It booted up right there, I didn't even finish my sentence. Okay, um, let's just have a listen, let's see what it sounds like. Ooh. The bass is good. Like the, the, the you can already tell. She, her voice is like here, right in the middle. It's it, it's not like there. It's, it's interesting. That's really nice. What they've done with these speakers is really good. I've heard the M1 MacBook Pro um, in like an Apple store, and one of my friends has got one as well. That's really nice. Uh, really good. I know the 16 inch they're even bigger, um, but the 14 inch that's really nice. You could mix on that, maybe. Who knows? Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take track one and I'm going to take track, what are we on? 36, 37, 42, 42 tracks. I thought it was 43. So we're going to duplicate them, duplicate them, and then duplicate them. So I'm going to do it four times. So this is going to take a bit of time. So come back to me when we're finished. Okay, so a little while later, uh, we have got this track four times all on the same thing. So I've quadrupled every single track, including the harmony stacks. We've got the same stack four times. So we now have 168 tracks. Don't ask me how many effects or plugins there are. There are absolutely loads, as you can see here. Now, you wouldn't normally do this. You could put an, a hall effect onto a bus and just send it there. But this is just a pure experiment right now. So I've got so many different things going on here. And before I even hit play, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the performance meter in Activity Monitor. So in Activity Monitor, we're going to bring up CPU usage and this is going to show you exactly what it's doing with the CPU one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so we've got our ten cores right there now I'm going to turn this down because of course it's got four times the amount on there in fact what I'm going to do is let's just turn it down on the master there just a little bit there we go I'm going to hit the space bar on Logic Pro let's see what happens <laughs> it, it's playing it did i ever doubt it should i have doubted it okay so can you can see from the meter there it's not even like maybe a quarter per core apart from the two efficiency cores which of course are over 50 percent right now 
but it's still handling it. It's still fine. And that's a track that is 168 tracks. And that is a track that has been out there in the world that has got multiple effects. It's got EQs. It's got delays. It's got buses. It's got all different kinds of things going on. And it's all been played live right here. Oh, and by the way, that's a track that I've now timed by four inside Logic Live. Right, so I've now added another four onto every track. So now we've got eight times for every single track. So it's gone a bit tiny because <laughs> there's loads on here. So we've got eight of the vocals, eight of the harmony, eight of the vocal stack, and inside the stacks is every single stack. Uh, the vocal textures, there's eight of them inside each one. So long story cut short, we've got, it says 330, let me jump that down because we've got little bits of instances here. So individually, we've got 336 tracks. Um, I don't know how many plugins there are. I'll count them up and I'm going to put them there. And I've brought the meter up again for the cause. I'm going to turn it down because it's going to be really loud because it's going to be quadruple. No, it's going to be eight times the volume. So I've turned it right down. And I'm just going to hit play again and see what happens. <laughs> okay, so we're eating more of the calls now. Again, about a quarter. I'm going to move it over to where the chorus is just to see. Yeah, everything kind of kicks in at that point. Okay, we're eating a bit more now. But it's still playing. Okay. It's playing. It's And it's playing well. It's going, and what? <laughs> Let's have a look at the actual um, mixer. I'm going to have to sit there and count all these out, just so you know how many effects there are. So I want to know as well, if I'm honest. Jeez. There's some turned off. I will turn them back on and add them in. Right, I'm going to stop that. Screw it, I'm going to double it again. I'm going to have 16 of each one. Hang on. 192 plus 16 plus 64 plus 48. Hi, so... <laughs> this is crazy. I have basically timed every track by 16. And I'm scrolling through it now just so you can see I've kept every uh, stack open. Just so you can see how many there are for each one. It's insane. Uh, there is now, let's just scroll right to the bottom, which takes a while. Oh, I haven't opened these ones, so let's open these as well, just so you can see all of them. While I'm doing this, every track has effects on it. We are now at 672 tracks. I have sat here for a good 20 minutes, figuring out every single plugin that is on here. And look at me scrolling, it's insane. The total of effects plugins on this track, which is Billie Eilish's Ocean Eyes times by 16, is 2,512 plugins. <laughs> okay, I'm scrolling back to the very beginning, and I've also gone right to the very beginning of the track. If this plays... <laughs> I, I don't know what. I, I, we're in a new world of computing, but let's just see what happens. Holy crap. Okay, it's really kicking up now, but it's... Jesus. It's playing. It's playing with 2,512 plugins. I'm going to skip. I'm just going to skip to the chorus and see how it handles it. There we go, system overload. Okay, right, okay, fine, that's okay. We, we kind of broke it, and that's all right, that's no problem. Let's just try it again. Yeah, okay, so we've got system overload. So 16 times 
At 2,512 plugins, it has gone. The audio engine was unable to process all the data required in time. You can try increasing the I.O. buffer size. So let's try and do that. Um, so let's go into preferences, audio devices. We're at, <laughs> we're still at 128 I.O. buffer size. All right, I didn't know that. Let's let's go. Let's just put it up to the max and just see what happens. Um, I didn't realize this. So the eight times was playing at 128 buffer size. Yeah, so we're at 1,024 samples for the buffer size now. Uh, we're just coming through the, the speakers. That's it. Let's see what happens this time around. It plays the intro. I can't believe it plays at all. <laughs> I think I've got some of them a little bit out of time. That's why you can see that there. I'm really going to annoy it now, and then we're just going to move the tracks along. I'm going to let it play through the verse so it can... Yeah, there we go. System overload. Okay. So we've increased the buffer size to the maximum we can. Times 16. Um, we've maxed it out. Uh, but that is really impressive. It really, really started to play at the beginning. And we are on <laughs> um, 672 tracks. Now, you can have, obviously, a lot more tracks than that in Logic, but some of these tracks have got loads and loads of plugins in, and I've turned all of them on. So there's over 2,500 plugins here, and we've crashed it. And that's fine. That's okay. I'm, not about, I'm never going to use... Two and a half thousand plugins. Oh, by the way, while we're doing all of this, it's also screen recording the screen as well. So, like, you know, it's insane. So, <laughs> it's just insane. I'd never get to 2,512 plugins, like, in one session. I'd use, like, buses and things like that. It's incredible what it can do. That's the fact that it even played the intro with that many tracks and that many effects and plugins. I'm, I'm blown away. So the question is, should you get one? Now, I would actually expect that the base model will just work just as well with eight cores. This has got 10 cores, and this is 16 gigabytes of unified RAM. Now, the only reason I went up to this one is because of the one terabyte storage. Now, yes, I'll be working with a lot of stuff that is on hard drives or SD cards, and then when I'm finished, I'll move it off onto an external hard drive. That's just what we do as music creators and content creators. However, if your computer is starting to feel the age of time when you need newer stuff and you want to do things like for example this year and next year I want to get into spatial audio mixing I can't do that on this computer and that's one of the major reasons why I decided to go for a new computer and also I want it to be portable again so a laptop is a great great option now I'll probably end up getting some kind of monitor or TV screen just to go up there but so I've got some kind of hybrid system I don't need it to be like a 4k ultra HD TV I just need something so I can see more real estate for logic now I'm still gonna be editing my videos on that. This very video has been edited on that, the iPad, with using LumaFusion. Now you can use Final Cut or LumaFusion on this if I wanted to, but my primary for video editing is still going to be my iPad Pro. But what an absolutely amazing setup and I am so honoured and blessed that I have the opportunity to have these things in my life. So we have an iPad Pro for video editing and we have a MacBook Pro which can do video editing but mainly for running music production. Now I'm going to be covering a couple more things to do with Logic moving forward with the channel and if there's something that you want to know about logic then let me know in the comments section below as i say i use it myself i use it with clients and i think together we're going to go on a bit of a journey certainly with spatial audio now if you have found the content of this video useful then please give it a thumbs up it really helps me and it does help the channel grow i just want to thank our sponsors today which is distrokid click the link and start distributing your music today that's what i do with distrokid and if you are thinking of picking up one of these bad boys i've also put a link in the description for that as well so let's change the setup. Welcome to the new setup for 2021 to 2022 and beyond. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.